Glad you're here today. Um, can you hear me? On? Yes? Okay. So, um, Brett and Damon asked me to come up and model the um, <laughs> t-shirt. They wanted a live model. <laughs> no. I purposely wore this t-shirt today because I felt like the Lord wanted me to address and talk about the mission of our church, which is essentially being created and called. And the mission itself is this put up on the screen, to help people experience all they're created and called to be in Christ. And so we feel like that's God's calling, that's God's mission for our church. Our mission isn't to build a certain type of church, to have these certain type of ministries, to be this or that. Our mission is you. Our mission is you. We're here. We exist. We're been formed and commissioned by the Lord for you. That's our mission, is to help you experience the life, the goodness, the purpose, the meaning that God created you for. That's what we're here for. That's our mission, to, to do that. And so today I'm wrapping up the, our vision series, and I felt like it's good to talk about the mission of our church. So let's start by talking about created. Right, the top, created, created. You know, being created implies something really important. It implies we have a creator. If we're created, then we're created by someone. And it implies a creator. And what you think about a creator, it has huge implications huge ramifications. Whether you believe there is a creator, God, or whether you do not believe there's a creator, God, has huge ramifications for your life. For example, let's say you do not believe that there is a creator. You believe in, um, you know, evolution, complete evolution. What that means is you're here by chance. It's totally by chance. There was no creator. You're here randomly by chance, right? Some atoms bumped into each other, created life, created like single-celled microorganisms. They developed, they evolved, and you're here today. It's because of chance. It's random. It's almost like dumb luck, right, that you're here. What that means is there is no greater meaning to your life. There is no greater purpose to your life. When you die, that's it. You cease to exist. Your loved ones cease to exist. There's nothing else. There's nothing more. We're just here by chance. It also means that there are no right or wrongs, there are no absolute truths, there are no moral values. Do you see about that? If we're, there's no creator, if we're here by chance, there are no moral values. So you could, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah, it might hurt people, but who cares? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Because I'm just here by chance, you're just here by chance, we're just here by chance, living this short existence of life, and it's over, and that's it, and there's nothing more. But if you believe there's a creator, if you believe in the creator of the Bible, huge implications. It makes complete difference. It means that he made you. He formed you. The Bible says even when you were in your mother's womb, he was forming you. He created you. And he made you for a reason, for a purpose. Let's look at this verse. Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. I'm reading in my Bible reading. Uh, I'm in Isaiah. It's been awesome. I, the book of Isaiah, the Lord has been opening up. Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. Now look at this. 
But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel, the one who formed you. And so this passage is addressed to Israel, but it's addressed to God's chosen people, Israel. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in him, you have been become part of God's family. You are his chosen person. So this passage applies to God's people who were the Israelites in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, after Jesus, everyone who puts their faith in, I believe this Bible passage applies to us. It says, who formed you? He says, this is God talking through Isaiah, do not be afraid for I have ransomed you. I bought you. I purchased you. From the enemy, from Satan. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, God, uh, Satan took ownership of the world. So God ransomed us. I ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God says to you, I know you by name. I made you. You're mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned. The flames will not consume you. We've been through some floods. We've been through some trials. We've been through some things. The Lord says, you are mine, and I will be with you. Verse 3, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. At that time, the Lord was saying to Israel, I gave up other nations for you. For us? Who or what did God give up? For us. Jesus. He says, I gave someone else. I exchanged another for you. So that you can be saved. So that you could be mine. Because it says, you are precious to me. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the spirit of the Lord to you today. He's saying to you. You are precious to me. You are of awesome value to me. Powerful words. You are honored, and I love you. The God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it, he says, I love you. Those are the most powerful words in all of existence. The words of the creator God saying to you and me, I love you. Verse 7, bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. I w it was I who created them. God says, I created you not for ordinary, not for mediocre, not for okay. I created you for my glory. I created you for a purpose, for an awesome, eternal, glor glorious reason. I made you. So, we have a choice. You can choose. I don't believe in a creator. There's no meaning. When you die, that's it. No morals. Live whatever you want because you're here. Life is like a vapor. You're here one day. You're gone tomorrow, and that's it. You could choose that, or you could choose to believe there is a creator. But as a creator, he bought me. I belong to him. He loves me, and he created me for a reason. The Bible says you were made for a reason. You were made to be part of God's family. 
and that you belong to him. I have this here, this, this ring, right? This is my wedding ring. I wear it 24-7. I, I almost never take it off. Ever since I got married, 30, okay, 34 <laughs> years ago, 35 years this year, okay? Why do I wear this ring? You don't know? Well, let me tell you why. Good question. I wear it because this says, I belong to someone. I belong to another person. They have claim on me because I have made a vow and commitment to God to, before my parents, before my family and friends. I have made a vow and a commitment to another person. I belong to them. Right? God says, you belong to me. It reminds me of the movie Toy Story. Remember Toy Story? Yes. Toy Story, the Pixar, right? The movie by Disney. And in that movie, the star of the movie is Woody, right? Yeah. Woody. And what does Woody have written on the bottom of his boot? What? Yeah. Yeah. Right there, right? On the bottom of Woody's boot says Andy. Says Andy. That's because it's he's Andy's toy, right? Woody belongs to Andy. It all belongs to its owner. That's right. Just like, right? Just like God bought us with Jesus. We have God's name on our hearts in blood. And it says, I belong to someone. You know, Andy, I mean, uh, Woody belonging to Andy, that gave him security. That gave him purpose. That gave him a family. That gave him a home. That gave him meaning. That gave him value. I belong to someone. You do too. If you put your faith in Christ, you belong to God. And so, created. We're created. We have a creator. We belong to him, and he has a purpose for us. And then the second word is called, right? It comes out of, it's a reflection of being created by God. We are called. Let's look at this, Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Okay, so this is a you know, very famous verb. Many people know this verse. Many people quote this verse. It doesn't say that all things are good, but it says that God uses all things, even bad things, he could use for the good of not everyone, but for the good of those who love him. So if you love God and are following God, God says, I can turn even the hardest things even the darkest things, even your worst failures, I could turn that and use that for good. There's hope in that. You know, there are many, many people who have done horrific things or experienced horrific things. But because they believe and follow the Lord, believe in Jesus Christ, he has taken something that was painful or tragic or horrific, and he has turned that and used that in their life so that they, through his power, are helping other people who have experienced things like that. So, so he says, he can take those things. He uses all things for the good of those who love him, who are called called according to his purpose. So that means God has a calling, a job, a reason for you to have been created. Okay? 
For God knew his people in advance. He knew you before time began. And he chose them to become like his son. You were chosen to be like Jesus. So that his son would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Okay? So God has a calling for you. God has a purpose for you. Now, calling, you could break it up into like three different aspects of calling. First, there's the general calling. God's general calling to people. And that calling is for all people, for believers, and it's to follow Jesus. He calls everyone to follow Jesus. Now, you, you have free will. He's giving you free will. You can choose to follow or not. If you choose to follow, then you are walking in God's calling for you. Okay, because he has a general calling. It involves salvation. He wants all men, all women, all people to be saved, to get a new identity in Christ, to become a new person in Christ, to have eternal life. That's his general calling for all people. He gives freedom from sin, complete forgiveness covered by the blood of Jesus for all your sins, past, present, future. You know when you, when you stumble and fall or if you sin? You're automatically forgiven. Automatically. Because the blood of Jesus covers you and it's good for covering all your sins, past, present, future. All the sins that you are going to commit in the future... It's already covered by the blood of Jesus. Knowing that gives us freedom from sin. And he gives us the Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us life, to give us the life of Jesus within us. And he gives us the word, the word of God, the Bible, right? Right? so that we can know him and grow in our faith in him. And so that's God's general calling for everyone. It's everyone to be saved, everyone to follow Jesus, everyone to experience his new life, everyone to walk in that. That's his general calling. And then there's this group calling. There's this group calling. So different groups, like for our church, we have a calling as Catalyst. Our calling as Catalyst Christian community is that we will help people experience all they're created and called to be in Christ. That's his calling for us, right? But there's, there's a calling. It could be to, for your small group. It could be for your family. Your family has a calling by, from God. A specific calling, a specific purpose that he wants for your family. But there's a corporate group calling. And then there's individual calling. I believe each individual person the Bible says you have received gifts from God, special spiritual gifts from God. Your abilities, your experiences, God wants to use all those things. Your talents, your passions, he wants to use all those things for his purpose here on earth. Now in our church, we're developing, um, Evasha and her team are developing this program called Thrive. T-H-R-I-V-E. It's Thrive, and it's an acronym, Thrive, for testimonies and themes, T-H, hesitations. Those are things that are holding you back, addressing the things that might hold you back from walking in God's calling for you. Uh, realignment, realignment with God and his purposes for your life. Identity, our identity in Christ and the gifts you have in Christ, your values, and then your experiences. And so they're developing this this program, series of training and teaching that you can go through, that it, the small groups can go through to help you identify God's calling for you, for your life, and help you to take steps to begin pursuing God's calling for you. So Evasion and her team are developing this Thrive program to take everyone in our church through it so you could begin to help see, oh, I think I have this gift. Oh, I, I didn't, never knew I had this ability. Oh, 
I see when I look back at my life, God has been doing all these things in my life, and it involves helping the poor or working with children or helping, you know, some people, some of the gals in our church are for human trafficking or for to be a teacher or whatever to help you identify that so you can start walking in God's calling and experience the life and fulfillment he has for you. Now, how are we going to help people? This is one way, but in, in, overall, how is our church going to help people become all they're created and called to be in Christ? All right? Well, during this whole pandemic, during this last two years, our staff, we have not been home just twiddling our thumbs, okay? We have not been just home, not doing it. We've been working really hard, our staff. And in fact, we have completely reorganized our whole church. Behind the scenes, we have spent hours of prayer and discussion and planning and you know, working on stuff. We've spent hours and hours behind the scenes during this pandemic completely reorganizing our whole church so that we could better fulfill our church's mission, which is helping people helping you all, helping those outside to ch our church to be all they're created and called to be in Christ. We've completed, in fact, we've created new structures, we've created new ministries, we've added some new staff, and I think every single person, including myself, every single staff member of our church has had their, their job description and roles and responsibilities completely changed. All of us have had our roles and responsibilities completely changed. Because, we, because, because we've been reorganizing our church so we could fulfill our mission to help you, to help people outside of our church, to be all they're created and called to be in Christ. And we've organized our whole church around these four like steps or four themes, okay? And they're right here. Okay, this is a picture of our church's model and process to help people become all they're created and called to be in Christ. And thanks to Sakura, right? Sakura Reese, she created this beautiful graphic. So the four areas are engage, connect, grow, and flourish. And so our hope is to help people go through this process so that you can flourish as the person God created you to be and called you to be. You can experience all that God wants you to know, experience, live in your life as God's creation. All right? Now, let me go through this real quick. Okay? Engage. Engage. Basically, it's engaging with people who are currently outside of God's family cur or cur and currently outside of our church. Okay, so it's us engaging with people and helping them to engage with us, ultimately so that they can engage with the Lord. They could engage with God, because that's the first step of them becoming all you're created and called to be in Christ. It's connect with God. And the leader of, the director of this ministry is Damon Gohata, our engaged director on the left. And then... Um, supporting Engage is Megan Deguchi, and she's in doing multimedia, social media. You might have noticed in the last couple of years, uh, we have, we're on everything now, right? <laughs> Instagram, Facebook, we have podcasts. I mean, we have all kinds of stuff. A, a large part of that is uh, we have a lot of videos um, going, coming out, and a lot of part of that is, is Megan kind of helping push that along. So she's been doing a great job of that. Okay, so it's just to engage with people outside of our church that need to, that God wants to connect with them. Okay, so that's engaged. Next is connect. So connect is the second one. Again, and that is helping others connect with our church family and helping them connect with God. Connect with God. And there are some key areas of commitment. You know, in, in the, your walk with the Lord, there's always these lines of commitment that you have to decide, I'm going to cross that line. I'm going to make that commitment. 
And we feel like there are foundational commitments in a person's becoming all they're created and called to be in Christ. And so these are some of them. And this is the area of connect. It's first, receive Christ. Receive Jesus Christ. That's the first, that's everything. Put your faith in him. Get to know Jesus. You know, I, I've been sharing this. I, I, I should be on their payroll for The Chosen. I, I've been talking about the movie series, the, the, film, the uh, television series, The Chosen. It's free. You could go to get a, The Chosen app. You could go to YouTube and watch season one. Um, it's awesome. But I feel like I've met Jesus in a deeper way through watching that series. It's been awesome. So I encourage you, if you want to get to know Jesus, if you want to connect with Jesus, start watching that series. And I, I guarantee you, you're going to go, wow. If that's what Jesus is like, I want him. I want to know him. It's awesome. So it's help people receive Jesus Christ, help people to get baptized, commit that, commit that step of baptism, because that represents I'm a new person in Christ committed to join a small group we feel like in our at least in our church small groups are the key to growing in your faith you can't grow on your faith as lone rangers and then choose a church as your community we would welcome you to be part of our church family we would love to have you be a part of our church family to help us to to grow to be who god created you and called you to be and to help us to help others to do that but be a part of it. It doesn't have to be catalyst. There's a lot of awesome churches out there, good churches out there, but it's important to be part of a church family. Okay, so that's what Connect does. The leader of Connect, the director of Connect is Associate Pastor Ross. Okay, so that's under Connect. Okay, the third area is grow. Grow, okay, so engage, connect, and then once they're connected with the Lord, they start connecting with, their, at least it's with our church family. We want them to grow in their faith. And growing involves, as you see, and grow has these little box around. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see that. It's some keys to growth. Knowing your identity. Developing intimacy with God. Right? Um, consecrating our life to God. Uh, and then we have this other one. Healing and wholeness. Because we believe the Lord wants to heal us. He wants to make us whole of those things, those experiences, those challenges that we all have in our lives, right? So that's grow. We have small groups. We have, as Kyle mentioned, tea, what's called tea huddles or transformation huddles, these tiny groups of like two or three people where you can um, just encourage one another in your faith and then just encouraging you in your personal time with God. That's the biggest part of grow is your personal time with the Lord. So encouraging you in all that, and the people leading this is my better half, Dale, right? Dale, grow director. And then Jody. Jody is volunteer staff, but she's uh, director of healing and wholeness. All of our prayer ministries, okay? Um, they're awesome. Prayer ministries for you, if you're going through something, if there's some... Um, you know, blockage or wall you feel like in terms of your growth with God, they can help you. You just go to our website. You can sign up for a prayer session. They'd love to do that. All right. And the last one is flourish. So the plan, that's, uh, that's the goal is people would be flourishing to be all they're creating called to be in Christ. And this is, again, identify your calling, identify your giftings, and help you to take the step. And like I mentioned, person in charge of that or helping with that is Evasha. She's doing the Thrive program, <laughs> developing that, and she has a team that's doing that, some great people, so they'll be working on it. It's probably rolling out later this year. All right, and then finally, as a support, we have our, and I just want to introduce everyone, we have our administrative ministry, and that's, they help organize, oversee, coordinate, support, and it's Kyle Anama, our administrator, and then <laughs> Kareen Suzakita. So Kareen Suzakita was our children's director, but she's been shifting a lot of her responsibilities, and she's going to help coordinate the church as a whole. That we feel like that fits her better, that matches her. She loves spreadsheets. 
I, I, that, blo that blows my mind. She loves spreadsheets. She gets excited about spreadsheets. They go, you go, Creek, because I don't like spreadsheets, but you do. <coughs> so she's been shifting to this. Um, so, yeah, that's some of the main, that all of this happened during the pandemic. We transformed our church, our ordinance, because we're committed to helping people again be all they're created and called to be in Christ. Okay, I just want to leave the, the, the last few minutes. Um, there's a whole other area. You might think, what about the kids? What about the youth? What about the young adults? What, what, what's going on with them? We completely revamped this whole area, and we're calling it now Life Stage Ministries. Life Stage <laughs> Ministries. And directing Life Stage Ministries from babies to young adults is Jerry Benuya, okay? He's the director, so in the closing time, Jerry's going to come up and share about Life Stage Ministries. Thanks, Jerry. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. It's literally been like three years or so since I've been in service, at least. Uh, so it's wonderful to see all of you. It's really great. Um, yeah, so if you don't know me, my name is Jerry Benuya. I've been at Catalyst since the very beginning. Marcy and I were engaged when, uh, when Catalyst was starting at, at Cerritos Baptist Church. And uh, a few years later, I, I went to serve with Damon in, in youth group, and I was just wanting to do, like, sweep the floors and make copies for him. And he's like, no, nah, man, let's do this. And uh, it's been great. And I've been uh, helping him lead and then transition to, to lead uh, youth uh, for over 10 years. And it's life-changing. Like these guys. Dang. I love them so much. Um, and so... It's really cool to see all the different things that have changed through Catalyst all over the, uh, all through the years. And so typically most organizations, most businesses, you know that it's very structured. There's silos. You, t you have a responsibility and you take care of it. That doesn't matter what sector it is. That's what we're used to. And it works. Um, but what we've done is we've changed the paradigm in which uh, Catalyst is operating its ministries. And so to help explain that, can I share a story with you guys? I think it'll be really uh, helpful to have imagery, especially with the little kids here. And so during the pandemic, I was invited to a Filipino party, and I was so excited. There's going to be a lot of food. There's going to be a lot of games. going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but at the same time, it's the pandemic, so I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm a little scared. <laughs> I need to wear my mask. I got to do my six feet apart. But when I get to the party, I'm like, I'm uh, excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's something boiling inside that something was lost during being in quarantine. And so as I drive up, I'm on time. Uh, the, the party started at 2. And of course, is the party ready? No! You guys know Filipinos, apparently. So we're not ready, right? We're not ready. We're not ready. It's like things are happening, and the aunties are, like, trying to fix the decorations. Hui, come on. Come on. Let's fix the decorations. I need help. Boy, come on. I need, like, tape. Help me out here. And then uh, cousins are, are trying to help with the balloons, and then all these people are running around, and it's like the party's happening. It's all the decorations. I'm like, wow, this is so much fun. The chaos is so much fun. <laughs> But then I walk up, and I'm like, I walk up to the host, and I said, oh, you guys need any help? And they said, of course. And then me running restaurants for many years, they said, can you help with the food? I'm like, okay, let's help the, let's fix the salad. Let's get the food ready. And I'm looking around, and everyone's pitching in. I'm like, this is so much fun, and the party hasn't even started yet. So we're organizing the buffet, uh, and then uh, the, 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 there's other aunties and cousins are fixing the games and preparing the games for the little kids. I'm like, this is great. And then the party continues on, and we're eating. And uh, as, right when I'm about to finish, the, uh, one of the hosts comes up to me. She says, Jerry, can you help me lead the games? Sure, of course. What's the game about? She's like, oh, here, look at this Pinterest and uh, try to figure it out. I'm like, all right, cool. Cool, I could do that. So I'm playing the games with the little kids. And we have our hashi or our chopsticks, and we're trying to put Legos into a, a, a container. And that's the game, and it's so much fun. And then after that, we're going to, 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 the, uh, to the tree, and we're going to hit the piñata. I'm like, yeah, you know, kids hitting a piñata. It takes a little bit of time trying to hit it, trying to hit it. So we're ripping up, the, right, the cousins, we rip up the piñata, throw the candy, and it's 
mayhem, right? It's mayhem and it's crazy. But we're having so much fun. And then as the party winds down, I get to hang out. There's some high schoolers and college guys. I get to hang out with them, which is my heart. Um, that's my personality, and so I think that's why I connect with them so much. Um, so I'm hanging out with them, and the party goes on. And then I'm hanging out with some parents, and they're saying, hey, Jerry, you know, this is what's happening in my life. And actually, these are some struggles that are happening in my marriage. I'm like, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. And we communion on, and we have more stories to share. We have advice to give each other. Knowledge, really. It's not about advice of like, oh, you got to do it my way. But this is what I've experienced. And so take it however you feel the Lord leads you. And the party ends, and I'm driving home, and I'm filled with a spirit. One... I just was so happy to be with people, to be in community. And there's part of me who's introverted, so I kind of liked quarantine a little bit. <laughs> there's a little bit of part of me that I enjoyed actually being not around people. But when you're with people, there's something that you cannot replicate on YouTube or Instagram or any of my social media points. And so I'm filled up and I'm uh, uh, really enjoying the memories that was just created. And then a few days later, the Lord says, this is what life's mi life stage ministry is about. And I was like, what? And he, the Lord said to me, this is what life stage ministry is going to experience through Catalyst. It's experiencing community, different leaders coming together. It's not just one person throwing a party, but many people coming together to make the party even bigger, make the party even better, have more parties to experience. And so I'm so, so thankful uh, to introduce uh, our team. And so team, can you guys come on up? Come on up and uh, wanna make sure you guys be recognized. And it's been just a few months uh, being with the team and, and how we've formed, uh, but it's just really awesome to, to be together. Um, I came in not being a, having a, um, a ministry background. I came in because I had a heart to serve, because I wanted to be with people, because I wanted to pour into the next generation. And the same heart is experienced through our team. And so I'm going to go uh, down the list uh, uh, from all the different ministries that we have amongst Life Stage. And so uh, first is uh, Ida Akmine. She is amazing. She's leading our parent ministry. Uh, so much of, of the past years of me and Kareen, we've been doing so much within our, our ministries of working with the kids and working with the youth. There's so, there was only so much time that we had with the parents, and so Ida coming along, pouring into them, creating so much training, uh, it's going to be really wonderful uh, having her, and we've already seen a lot of fruit, especially from coffee nights and the way that she's interacted uh, with everyone and, and uh, built that community with all the parents. So thank you, Ida. Uh, next, uh, the uh, newest uh, ministry to come along is Brandon Hojo. Yeah. And Brandon... He uh, is leading SIA, or the 20s uh, group. Um, he's part of uh, the, the uh, uh, group who's, who's started, again, being part of SIA, and then just blossomed into a leader. And we're just so grateful for him. And uh, so many fun activities are especially going to be happening with him and, and, uh, and to see what all the blossoming young adults uh, is going to be really great. Um, then... Uh, college ministry uh, is, is under my realm, and youth ministry uh, as well, so that's still going to stay the same, so I know these guys are... Check, check. Thank you. Um, then uh, what's new for youth ministry, we've always been middle school to high school, but we've transitioned that as well, and so Brett Hirata, he is over uh, seeing middle school group now. I'm very particular with my group. I'm actually like really protective of them. And so over the years, we, people have talked about, hey, what do you think about changing youth ministry to just high school? And I always go, no, 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 no. Uh, that's, we don't, I don't want to do that. 
they don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But when Brett came along, I said, no, that's time to, that's t- it's time for me to release it uh, because I trust Brett so much and I'm really excited for what he's going to do and um, wonderful things are going to happen and we've already seen it with these middle schoolers. So Brett, super great uh, to have you on the team. Um, and then next is children's ministry. Um, and so children's ministry, there's several different uh, facets to it, uh, all the way from sixth grade, I'm oh, sorry, uh, from fifth grade all the way down to, to the babies. Um, and so with Kareen uh, transitioning, um, we had to take a different, or we get to take a different approach in um, leading all the children uh, and, and fostering their spiritual life. Um, and it's so wonderful because it's the whole team. It's the whole team that's going to be uh, helping with, with uh, children's ministry uh, and then heading that, uh, especially on the administrative end and um, um, all the different communications is Chie Hamada. And so we're grateful for her joining staff. And so with all of this, there's so much um, fluidity. Uh, and things are going to be changing, and things are going to be moving, and so you'll get a bunch of emails and, 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 and updates on how that's going to look, uh, but we're just so grateful that now we know this is uh, the things that are, or this is the team that's going to be moving forward uh, to some capacity. Um, and so lastly, what I wanted to share um, is, again, we just want to express our hearts to serve all the parents, to serve all the young adults, the high schoolers, the children. We really... Um, um, are sacrificing the things that we want and really to invest it into you. And so thank you. Um, the, the theme uh, verse that comes to mind is, is the end of, uh, of the Old Testament in the book of Malachi. It says, uh, for the parents to turn their hearts to the children and for the children to turn their hearts to the, to the parents. And so that's my heart uh, for our ministry, and we're so grateful and thankful uh, that you guys entrust us. So we appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, we have the worship team come up. Thanks, thanks so much, Jerry. So um, there's been a lot of changes, but I'm very excited about where we're headed. Very excited about what, what, where we're headed, what's going on. And again, let me just let me just reiterate that. My heart as senior pastor of Catalyst is my number one desire and commitment is to see you flourish in who God made you to be, in who God created you to be, and how he's gifted you, and to see you released into that. That's like our greatest desire. And so we pray that the Lord would do that through our church this year and beyond. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thanks so much. You have created us. And we acknowledge you are creator. That we belong to you. That you own us, Lord. And we thank you that you are not harsh creator but you say that you love us that we are precious to you and that you exchanged your own son that we might come into life eternal life fullness of life with you and Lord, I, I want to, I pray that we would see tens of hundreds of people finding you and stepping into the life that you long for them, that you created them for, that you called them for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Just welcoming now. We just want to close just with some worship of you, for you are worthy. You are worthy. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us for our online service. Hope you will join us in person sometime. It would be great to see you and meet you. Don't forget to subscribe to our Catalyst YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything. And 
Be blessed this week, and as always, thank you, Jesus.